Thank you very much. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, it's a great, great uh, opportunity for me to be here, to be able to give you a short briefing about the Swedish Air Force. And as uh, mentioned uh, just before, my uh, job back home in, in Stockholm, Sweden, is that I'm head of the procurement and training department for the Air Force. So uh, during the next uh, 20 minutes or so, I would like to give you an overall brief about the Air Force. I will start with a mission, some uh, comments about uh, what kind of uh, assets we have today and what we have achieved uh, during the recent years, and uh, of course uh, look into the future. What are we striving for? What are we hopefully getting in our inventory? Uh, but as I uh, mentioned, I would like to start with a mission. And uh, the overall mission for our Air Force is to support the Swedish security policy to maintain peace and independence. In order to do that, we have uh, four main tasks for the Swedish Armed Forces, and that is to uphold the territorial integrity, to prevent crisis, and the defense, the nation, and also to support the society. That means uh, for us in the Air Force that we must have the capability to meet a high-end adversary through the whole scale of conflict and continuously maintain a high readiness state, an ability to reproduce and deliver capability in standing units with high availability and be able to conduct operations independently or with others, primarily in Sweden and near abroad, but also beyond when appropriate. So what kind of assets do we have in the Air Force? And I can say uh, directly that we are very small, especially if you compare it with the Air Force here in uh, India. Uh, we have uh, four fighter squadrons, and in uh, addition to that, we have uh, three uh, squadrons that are responsible for, for training and uh, development. We have one transport squadron, one uh, airborne early warning unit, one uh, signal intelligence unit, one helicopter battalion, two air base battalions, and uh, also battalions for air surveillance and, and control. And we are, uh, in the day-to-day -day, uh, business, we are uh, based in five uh, bases, and in, in wartime we can uh, operate from uh, up to eight bases. We are close to 4,000 personnel, and, and as a matter of fact, we are, are uh, lacking about 500 of them right now, most of them uh, soldiers, but they, we will increase the numbers uh, in the years to come. Uh, talking about uh, aircrafts, we have uh, a number of aircrafts, and I will uh, elaborate a little bit uh, on them later on. Uh, we fly around uh, 31,000 flight hours yearly. Uh, the backbone is, of course, our fighter, the JAS-39 uh, Charlie Delta. And uh, it's a multi-role uh, aircraft, quite small. The wingspan is about uh, 8.4 meters. And uh, it has an endurance of about uh, three and a half hours. And we have... Uh, recently phased out the previous model, model which is called uh, Alpha Bravo. So nowadays we have uh, uh, roughly 85 aircrafts and the number will increase the coming years to close to 100. The aircraft is uh, night vision uh, capable. It has a 27 millimeter gun, which we can use for air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. We also have air-to-air -air refueling capability. We have a number of different munitions that we can use for precision engagement. 
laser guided, GPS guided, and we also have a, a lightning pod. We have a quite uh, high situational awareness in the aircraft, and this is a product uh, of uh, a very good integration of all the different sensors and uh, weapon systems, and together with that, a very, very effective uh, man-machine interface. So we have a, a really good uh, SA. Uh, we have uh, BVR missiles uh, for the moment, uh, AMRAM, but in a couple of years we will also have uh, the Meteor uh, missile in the inventory, and we have, uh, with the close, uh, close range missiles, we have uh, Sidewinder and the Iris T. We also have uh, air to sea capability, which is in important for us. Though we have the, the Baltic Sea as uh, close to our, our country. And uh, there we have the RBS-15. As I mentioned before, we have the lightning pod and also a tactical uh, reconnaissance pod for IR ISR missions. So that is the, our uh, fighter. Uh, when we introduced the... Grip and fighter, we managed to, to uh, break uh, a, a very tough trend, and that was uh, the trend that the, the cost was constantly rising, as well as the operational eff effect, of course. But when we fielded the grip and, uh, grip and aircraft, we are, uh, since then we are ab able to, uh, to lower our cost, and not only for the investment, but especially also for the operational and, and maintenance cost. So we fly this aircraft with uh, very low costs per flight hour. Helicopters. Uh, on your uh, top left you see a light helicopter, uh, Augusta 109, which in, in Sweden calls, uh, uh, is named uh, Helicopter 15. We have uh, 20 of them, and they are used for support for the special forces, support to the Navy, and also as trainers. On the lower right, you have the NH-90, which is called uh, Helicopter 14 in Sweden, which is a European uh, project that has been uh, delayed quite uh, severe. And we have now uh, five aircrafts that we are, are using in the Air Force. And hopefully we will have a breakthrough this year uh, when we will have the delivery of the first uh, IOC helicopters. We have uh, procured uh, 18 helicopters, which is a multi-role system. And we will use them for everything between uh, troop transport to anti-submarine warfare. And on the left lower side, you have the Black Hawk, the UH-60 Mike, that we just uh, recently have uh, procured from the United States uh, with a foreign military sale. And uh, it took uh, 100 weeks since we uh, signed the contract until the uh, time that where we will be uh, operational in Afghanistan, which of course everyone understands is quite an achievement. And this has been done, of course, with the great support from the U.S. Army. They will uh, deploy to Afghanistan in, in uh, roughly four to six weeks. And uh, on the right hand side, we have the search and rescue helicopters, uh, Super Puma, a Eurocopter helicopter that will be phased out uh, in a couple of years. In, ad in addition to that, we have uh, eight C-130s of the H model. We have uh, uh, a number of Gulfstream aircrafts for VIP transportation and also for signal intelligence, and also uh, about 50 trainers that we use for basic flying training. Uh, 
We are also partner, partners in the multinational collaboration called the Strategic Airlift Capability. It's a multinational uh, unit based in uh, Papa in Hungary, where we uh, have uh, the possibility to use strategic transport with the three uh, C-17 aircraft that are based there. Uh, the C-130s are a bit uh, old, so we are just now undergoing a an, uh, an study whether we, we will uh, conduct a midlife update with them or we will uh, purchase a new C-130s uh, Juliet model. Of course, we have uh, assets for surveillance, command and control. And on the picture in the, in the middle, you see the airborne early warning and control uh, uh, aircraft, which we use for uh, uphold our uh, territorial and integrity and also to, to com command and control our assets. And in, in addition to that, we have, of course, uh, a number of radars and uh, CRCs sp spread out in the country. As I mentioned, we can operate from up to uh, eight air bases. Uh, that's uh, not so extraordinary. But what is uh, quite uh, interesting is that we also have the opportunity to uh, provide an expeditionary capability when it comes to uh, air bases. So we can deploy an air base and uh, maintain that and support that uh, somewhere in the world, in, and uh, it could be in Africa or it could be in, uh, in Middle East or whatever. And uh, I will show you just uh, in a couple of minutes that we have done that uh, in the past. So if we uh, summary, summarize uh, our Air Force uh, today, as I mentioned, we are really small. But even though we are small, we are what we call a, a mother air force. We are uh, able to reproduce ourselves. And we can sustain our capabilities by ourselves. We are very cost efficient. If you take the number of personnel and divide it with the number of aircraft, we have approximately 40 employees per fighter. But of course, when you are small, you have some challenges. First of all, we really have to, to strive to have a, a technological edge, to be very, to have aircraft that are very technical capable. And we also need to have highly professional officers and soldiers. And not only that, they have to be swing role. We have to be able to use them in a flexible way so people must be able to carry out different tasks. And of course, you must have a very effective leadership with the openness, result, and responsibility. But, of course, limited number of personnel and resources means also limited endurance and redundancy, of course. Some words about uh, the operations that we are uh, carrying out uh, or have been carrying out just recently. Uh, first of all, I would like to mention the, what we do uh, in order to uphold our territorial in integrity. Of course, we have uh, radar and other sensors uh, and also, uh, and also uh, fighter aircrafts on, on uh, high readiness alert to be able to conduct that. We often forget that, but this is an important, uh, important capability for, for, uh, for a country. We have, uh, in terms of uh, deploy, deployment outside of Sweden, we have uh, currently one helicopter unit in uh, Afghanistan, in ISAF, and that is a helicopter unit which is responsible for uh, Medevac in uh, Regional Command North, 
And they are equipped with uh, our Helicopter 10, the Super Puma, the Eurocopter helicopter that will be phased out in a couple of years. And they have been there for uh, approximately two years now. And they will be uh, hand over to the Black Hawk unit that will be there in a couple of months. We also have had uh, three times during the four last years uh, a C-130 unit in uh, Afghanistan for uh, roughly four months every time. And uh, that has been during the warm period of uh, the year, the summertime. Uh, we have little better capabilities than the others there, so we are able to, to provide the support that was needed. Uh, during 2011, we also uh, took part in uh, Operation Unified Protector with a fighter unit, roughly 100 personnel and five fighters. It was the first time since the 1960 that we deployed a fighter unit out, outside of Sweden. Uh, our main task was, was uh, uh, tactical air reconnaissance, and uh, we uh, did uh, close to 600 uh, reconnaissance uh, missions, and uh, we were highly successful. I have had the opportunity to uh, talk to General Bouchard, who was the commander of the Operation Unified Protector, and he was... Uh, really impressed and satisfied with the uh, highly valuable uh, reconnaissance reports that we provided for the coalition. Uh, and we also provided them in a very swift manner, uh, talking about uh, turnaround time from the mission until the report was uh, at the different commands. Uh, we managed to deploy uh, within two days after the government had made the decision that we should uh, take part, which is a proof of uh, very high flexibility and readiness. We also managed to uh, operate from the base in Sicily. Uh, despite the fact that the base was uh, closed due to an accident, and this was uh, due to the reason that uh, the Gripen aircraft is, uh, has a, a capability to start and land from very short uh, runways. So even though the runway was closed, we started and landed from the taxiway. And we were the only aircraft that had that capability. Uh, we also had, as I mentioned, an uh, air-based unit uh, deployed, and that was in the Democratic Republic of Congo in the 2003 and 2004. And we also had uh, a, a small uh, helicopter unit with uh, reconnaissance missions in, the, in Kosovo. And also uh, three years ago, we had the helicopters based on one of the Navy's ships uh, called uh, Karlskrona, in uh, the Bay of Aden, where they uh, were uh, looking for uh, pirates. And uh, we are right now uh, preparing for a, a new mission in the Bay of Aden with uh, the ship Karlskrona, also with uh, the same helicopter, the Helicopter 15. So, what lessons learned have we made uh, regarding international operations? Uh, we can uh, really say that we have done the right things uh, during the last years. We have really strived to be uh, interoperable, to uh, gain capabilities that uh, are needed within an international operation. We have made a number of modifications uh, we have uh, taken part in a number of exercises, and uh, that has really shown that we are uh, capable of uh, taking part in international operations. We have now, for instance, uh, talking about the uh, Gripen aircraft, we are fully interoperable with uh, NATO in terms of Link 16, 
have quick uh, communication systems and IFF. So, some words about uh, tomorrow. And uh, I would like to start with some, uh, some comments about uh, the strategic picture in, uh, in uh, the northern U Europe where uh, Sweden is uh, situated. Uh, the first comment is about the Baltic Sea, where we see uh, increasing uh, commercial traffic. We have uh, plans that uh, will uh, most likely uh, build a gas pipeline from the northeast part of the Baltic region, B Baltic Sea, down to the Central Europe. And we see an, an increased regional cooperation and also a very large interest in the Baltic region from all the nations that are neighboring the Baltic Sea. The second one I would like to highlight is the high north and the, the fact that uh, due to the global warming, the ice coverage is uh, shrinking which uh, will make it uh, possible for, for uh, new ways to uh, go from uh, Europe to uh, Asia. And this, of course, uh, means that the strategic interest is uh, growing in this region. And uh, in addition to that, we have, of course, the cyber threat. And, of course, we have uh, different... Uh, developments in, in the different uh, countries in terms of uh, military capabilities in, in Europe and in the near vicinity of Europe. To cope with that, or I am just would like to add also before I, I move on in the presentation, that it's uh, quite, uh, quite tough to predict the, the days to come in, in Europe nowadays. We have had a period uh, of, of 10 to 20 years where the uh, situation has been quite stable, but now it's uh, more unpredictable. So uh, in order to cope with that, uh, we, of course, have to uh, develop further. And uh, we have a plan how to develop, and, and uh, the overall aim with that pr plan is to be a very well-organized, professional, and robust air force with high availability and usability and be able to conduct both national and international mi missions. And the driver for this development or, or this plan is, of course, the current operations and also the national defense planning. From those two uh, categories, we will... Uh, constantly derive new lessons learned, and they will force us to develop our procedures, our tactics, or our uh, aircrafts. And we also have two important enablers, and that is cooperation, pooling and sharing in the, is the NATO terminology, and we have the same, uh, the same uh, thing, but it's called smart defense in uh, in another uh, agency. And of course, interoperability is a key area for us to, to maintain that in the future. Uh, we are a, a small air force uh, that I mentioned, and we also have a limited uh, amount of money to invest. And therefore, it's, it's very important to be able to have a balanced development we can't be uh, superior, in, superior in numbers, but then we have to focus on being superior in, in technology and in, in tactics. And uh, we have uh, a, a quite uh, good fleet in terms of, of uh, aircrafts. Uh, of course, our uh, C-130 aircraft is quite uh, old. But as I mentioned, we are looking on two different alternatives. When it comes to helicopters, we will have a very modern uh, fleet. And the Charlie Delta, 
is of course uh, is uh, roughly five to ten years old now, and that won't live uh, another ten or twenty years. So because of that, we have conducted a quite comprehensive study what to do with our uh, fighter systems. And uh, our uh, proposal from the Swedish Armed Forces and the Air Force was to uh, ma make a big capability lift. And uh, that was what we are looking for uh, right now. So the government, uh, they uh, listened to us, and they just recently uh, decided that uh, Sweden will uh, procure 60 new uh, fighter aircraft called uh, JAS 39 Echo. And this is uh, pending a uh, strategic partnership with uh, Switzerland, which uh, are planning to buy another 22 aircrafts. And for us, we are looking forward to have those aircrafts in, in uh, service in 2018. And Switzerland, they are uh, two years uh, in front of us, so they will have their first delivery around 2016. As I mentioned, the Gripen era started with the Alpha Bravo and then Charlie Delta, and, uh, which is the model that we operate right now. And right now, uh, the Saab, the manufacturer of the Gripen aircraft, they are now operating a demonstration aircraft. And uh, this is much uh, of the foundation for the Gripen Echo version that we will procure. The aircraft is uh, slightly bigger, slightly heavier, uh, new engine, new radar, and so on. And uh, we think that uh, this is the aircraft that really fulfills uh, our requirements, uh, linking to our missions and uh, the aim for, for the armed forces. So we have... Um, more fuel, which gives us uh, longer loiter times and uh, a better presence in the combat area. Uh, we will also be able to have uh, carry more uh, payload. We will increase the number of uh, weapon stations and also the maximum takeoff weight uh, with about uh, two and a half uh, ton. And we can uh, carry all modern smart uh, weapons, and that is uh, both uh, air-to-ground and air-to-air. -air. We will also have a uh, super cruise uh, capability, and uh, of course the aircraft is uh, quite small. It's, uh, it also have a quite small uh, radar cross-section, uh, which is an uh, advantage, of, of course. And as mentioned before, we will uh, uh, strive to gain a very high situational awareness, which is uh, proven to be uh, very important. And as all the previous versions of the Gripen, it will have a very low life cycle cost and, and will be quite cheap to operate. So with the new uh, Echo version of the Gripen fighter, together with the uh, highly modern uh, helicopters and uh, a moder modernized uh, C-130 fleet. We really think that we have a high-tech air force that can meet the requirements uh, for, from, uh, for tomorrow. And uh, when you combine that with uh, highly motivated and uh, well-trained airmen and airwomen, we really think that we can be uh, operational relevant for the decades to come. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, any questions from anyone, please? Please go ahead. Hello? Yes. Can you explain the logic behind plugging these two 
Yeah. In Sweden, we have a, a little different uh, structure. Uh, the chief of air force, uh, he's uh, responsible for the operational side of the house. So he is commander of the air component command. I am in another directorate called the production directorate. So I'm responsible for all the air wings in the country and all the day-to-day -day business and also responsible for the pr procurement. So we have a very, very peculiar or, or uh, different ways to organize compared to, to uh, conventional air, air force. So that's why. So we thank uh, General Swenson. And any other questions during tea time, perhaps you could ask them, which is there, maybe. Thank you. And uh, you see, they broke through that uh, reasonable aircraft at a reasonable cost. I think Gripen made that point, isn't it? Am I right in saying yeah. that?